uh welcome everyone uh, thank you for joining and taking this time to uh, join this first session on vermam in day to day life um so we'll be starting now i'll just uh, uh, hand over to uh, veni ma'am uh, she is part of uh, vkrc and uh, she will give a little brief about uh, what is uh, verma kalpa rejuvenation center is all about and what is that we do on vermam uh, veni ma'am over to you Veni ma'am, can you hear me? I think. She... No, I think she should join back. Okay. Give us a second. Yeah. Yeah. Hello everyone, and a warm welcome. I'm sorry, I got disconnected. So let me just uh, introduce uh, a little bit about uh, VKRC, the Varma Kalpa Rejuvenation Center. So VKRC is a trust which has been uh, working for the past couple of years, and it is a knowledge resource for Varmam and Indian traditional system of healing. So we work, we constantly research on Varmam manuscripts, and uh, we are working on digitizing the manuscripts so that we can bring the lost knowledge treasure into the world. So establishing knowledge centers, publishing books on Varmam, and then make Varmam reach across boundaries globally. so these are the goals of uh, vkrc we also are constantly working on educating people about the allied sciences that varmam is associated with so it can be in the field of healing defense system spirituality quantum science or multidimensional travel so we are working also on establishing clinical research on the results that varmam is producing on the therapy that has been provided So now for this uh, we are trying to find and also establish the results which it is already giving wonderfully in terms of bone nerve and mind related problems. So VKRC is also working on uh, bringing in formal education in the field of varmam and also to help people live a painless life and also uh, attain painless death. sendelsar next slide yeah. yeah so now a few words about our varmam uh, guru vinanetra shri ramesh babu uh, namaste sir so he is the founder trustee of varma kalpa rejuvenation center who had all these dreams and uh, made a vision and a mission to make varmam reach every corner now he is a researcher in varmam manuscripts author and also an academic academician so he is the senior research associate at tdu bangalore he is a expert committee member of uh, ccras he is the joint secretary of traditional siddha varma healers association that is ccwaha in kanyakumari he is a director at agastya wellness center where the clinical research is happening right now and at ocean vaidyashala he is also a trainer in varmam and memory techniques conducting several types of programs for uh, novice to professionals including a uh, medical professionals conducting vasi yogam for uh, helping people attain kaya kalpa and spiritual attainment so he is being trained by more than 18 gurus and we are blessed to have you as a guru sir yeah. next slide please you can uh, move ahead so he is also an author of uh, the first english book in varmam which has the manuscripts which is the core Uh, or say uh, from the roots where the varmam has been uh, retrieved and he is also been awarded the siddha marma vaidya ratna award by bharatiya nat vaidya mahasangam in 2016 so please yeah thank you and we have here mr sindil kumar uh, hello sir welcome so he is the faculty vkrc training in charge for the day to day life program so he is an it professional with more than 20 plus years of experience and he is in the field of counseling and he is a counseling psychologist a varmam therapist and ayurveda panchakarma therapist and he has got expertise in several areas like he is a preventive lifestyle coach psychology counseling relationship counseling stress management pain management and body and mind wellness trainings thank you sir 
Thank you, Anima. Okay. Thank you for the intro. Uh, I hand over the session to him now. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, good evening, good day for you uh, the joining this session. Uh, as we say, like you know, this is a awareness session, and I am uh, uh, privileged and uh, you know uh, honored to, to take this uh, journey of uh, spreading the awareness. I just wanted to share uh, a gratitude uh, because uh, this vermum is a healing science. Uh, uh, preserved and protected and carried almost like 5,000 years by Siddhas. There are 18 Siddhas who carried this all along. So our gratitude to them because with their blessings, it is available today for us to share and help everybody know and get benefit out of it. So I just wanted to give a gratitude in uh, Tamil. Padinan Siddharhal Ummarulal Pakkuva Maha Yedutturaitha Padamaha Maraitthi Vaitha Yivvarva Marthuvatthai because it's important for us to uh, uh, thank our gurus because it's a wonderful science and today I'm in a different field. I'm not in a medicinal field or anything, but I got an opportunity to learn, uh, practice, and today I'm having an opportunity to even teach. So that's the, uh, that's, uh, uh, the uh, privilege I'm getting. And with that, I will start our session. Uh, so what you can expect from this session, because it's a, I don't want it to be another, uh, 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 what do you call a session where we, we talk and then you, you listen and you understand something and then you forgot. Like it, I don't want it to be like that. So we wanted to make sure there is a key takeaway uh, for everyone. Uh, and I will also come to the, uh, the essence of why we need to learn this and why we need to understand this. So in this session, you will get to know about, uh, because this Varmam is a, buzzword and we keep hearing that's why you're here so you'll understand uh, what is this vermum why this vermum is required at this point and a little bit of uh, history about vermum and how to uh, practice or how is it uh, no I, I means we are using this in our day-to-day -day life and moreover uh, how we can take this further for self-healing and preventive health and we'll have a QA session in between a little logistics uh, uh, this being an online session i prefer uh, if you have any questions, please post that question on the chat window. Uh, probably some of your answers would have got already answered when we go through the sessions. Uh, but however, if you feel free to add your questions. Uh, towards the end, um, uh, we'll have the Q&A session and, and you can raise your uh, icon, the hand raising icon. So we'll open up for or unmute you for uh, asking a question. Okay, so let's get into uh, the warm up, the subject, right? Um, why? Uh, let me start with why, rather what? Let me, let me give a context of why that we, we are here. Uh, what made us, all of us to uh, come and listen to this session? And I know there is something, a common factor, and I, I see the common factor is uh, health. Okay, uh, today with the context of pandemic and what's happening in the last couple of decades, Health has become very, very important priority item for everyone. Uh, maybe because of uh, uh, a lot of induced diseases, like, you know, maybe Corona kind of a stuff is contributing only a 20, 30% of the disease, but remaining 80% is obviously a created disease or in psychological term, we call it as a psychosomatic disease. Almost 70% of the disease are created within us uh, due to our uh, 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 improper uh, lifestyle, food habits, uh, work-life imbalance, uh, stress, all those whatever we take unnecessarily creates some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, imbalance in the body and obviously that contributes to a disease. So that's the key uh, factor today. Uh, in, in, in because of that, we are kind of uh, 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 you know, seeing a decrease in our health condition our ability to uh, uh, the strength of our body, uh, stressful life. And obviously there is an increase in the medical expense. So this is the, these are the, the factors which is contributing uh, us for, uh, for us to look at something, uh, you know, uh, to live a life which is uh, uh, disease free. So today, if you see, uh, most of us will have an objective that I want to live a life which is disease free. Because these, all these factors are created that kind of fear because disease is any kind of a disease. It doesn't matter today, right? So the kind of uh, 
the pain we, we go through uh, and the treatment cost and the complication it creates into the physical, mental and all those things. Everybody is looking into a life which is uh, disease free, which is fine. In this journey, uh, we are also trying to explore uh, many things like, you know, primarily we're looking at something uh, preventive health because obviously preventive health is very key. Uh, and in that journey, we are also ready to explore a variety of traditional and alternative solutions. And obviously the expectation is that the solution should be easy to uh, practice and uh, side effects free. And in fact, from my background, I also had a similar kind of an example because of health condition, I started exploring what is this all about. In that process, I started learning an alternate or traditional uh, no, practice, which is absolutely fine. But what is very important here is uh, the entire objective of health is not just to live a disease-free life. Disease-free life is just one, one part of the health. <clears throat> very important to know what are you going to do with that uh, disease-free life. Uh, if you take an example today, today either we have a Swiggy or Zomoto kind of a service coming up. Earlier, we spent 30 minutes to go to a hotel, one hour to finish your food and another one hour to, or half an hour to come back. So it means it takes two hours. Today, with the, the service of Swiggy or Zomato, uh, we, are, we are almost like saving uh, one hour time because they're giving a service, so we don't need to go to hotel. So they're bringing everything, you can enjoy the food. But what are we doing with that, that extra one hour we saved? Are we really utilizing it for the good things or rather the beneficial for our uh, body, mind or uh, family? Maybe 30, 40% could be, but mostly 70% of us, we are again getting into a lazy lifestyle, Again, a laziness of going out, uh, watching, uh, you know, spending more time into entertainments and other time pass activity. So it is a similar story here. You know, even if you get a good uh, disease-free life, what are you going to do with that disease-free life, right? So the objective of health is not just disease-free. It's about enjoying that physical, mental, and spiritual happiness and fulfilling your desires or goals. And this is what precisely all the Indian traditional healing systems are insisting and, and kind of making sure you get into that. So it is not about a physical medical fitness. It is about a physical, mental and spiritual fitness. So you are into this journey, or rather uh, this session is all about how a Varmam, because we are, we are going to talk about Varmam obviously. So how Varmam is going to play a role in your health objective and health objective is not just disease free. It is about, we call it as Kaya Kalpa, which is mean longevity of life. And in that longevity, you should enjoy and fulfill all your dreams. So that's what is going to be the, uh, the takeaway. And that's where you'll, you'll also learn and move your journey towards. Okay. So now uh, let's move into what is Varmam. I think uh, fairly some of you would have some idea and just for the benefit of others who are just uh, new and maybe just hearing this word very recently, uh, it's important to make sure everybody is understanding and also to clarify many of your doubts because uh, Varmam, you may be hearing it from different forms, uh, you know, from medias and some movies and maybe from uh, the, the feedback from somebody who's already treated. So you may have a different uh, views and points around Varmam. My objective is to clarify that and then we we just look in what is Varmam uh, in day-to-day -day life, okay. Uh, for that context, I'm just taking a very uh, very simple and layman example. Uh, this map may be very familiar to us uh, from our school times. This is an Indian Railways uh, railway network map, okay. Such a co complex one, right? Because it's, a, it's the largest railway network in the world with millions of uh, you know, uh, people traveling every day, almost like 7,000 stations and uh, almost like a big division office, zone office. And you can easily understand the complexity of railway network. And we all experience by ourselves what happens if a train gets delayed, how sequentially it affects the other trains. So it's a very easy to understand how a very complex network function, right? And our body is not, uh, you know, simple. Our body is no different to a uh, Indian uh, railway network. And when I mean body here, I'm not getting into the physical body, okay? It's not about um, what you call uh, the respiratory system, nervous system, or uh, the typical 
anatomy and physiology of the body. So we need to understand uh, all these traditional systems works at a subtle body. So we always have two type of body, gross body, which is physical, and uh, we call it as a suchama. Suchama means it is a very subtle thing, which is not visible. So you cannot just find out. It is all like a subtle uh, energies or, uh, you know, uh, pranic level, where is no physically you can see and find out. So our body also works on that layer a lot. And this all traditional systems has a lot of uh, working or the interconnection towards that subtle uh, body. So our body also has that a complex uh, network uh, wherein we have almost 70 to 1000 nadis. We call it as energy channels, which runs across the body uh, and uh, passing on the energy signals, communications, whatever it may be, right? It is not a physical one, but I'm talking on a subtle nature. That's a huge network wherein every organ, every cell, everything gets the, the prana or the energy. So similar like the railway network, they also have some major locations. Uh, like example, a major location is a place where a, a physical a blood vessel or a lymph or a nerve or a muscle or a bone kind of intersect. It's like a junction point where some of the key physical element also intersect and there is an energy is uh, available to make them function normally. So those kind of a junction points, are like example in a railway zone of Bombay or a Bangalore or a Delhi, they're all like a big, big locations, right? Those locations are called as varmam points because they carry a very subtle energy and that helps, helps in functioning of that particular uh, organ or uh, you know, uh, the region. And these like a railway, we also have a major location and minor location. These junction points are also again classified into major location and minor location. We'll get into what is what are these location, how they were, but just from a logistics perspective, we understand the body also has a major and minor energy, subtle energy locations. Suppose if any of this location is, is disrupted or the energy in that location is disrupted or uh, injured, or there is a, a fault or it can be disruption, imbalance, anything mentally or physically happening, then it creates a disease. So as per Ayurveda and uh, uh, Siddha, we talk about 4,448 4, diseases possible when there is a disruption to this energy location. So the therapy or the, the, the healing signs to correct this energy and, and get rid of this disease is called as varmam therapy. Okay, so it's something like you know, uh, a, a treatment, treatment part of the or balancing the energy part so that the, the functioning of the organs and things comes back to the normal condition is called vermum therapy. So I believe this should help you to understand, fairly understand what is this vermum story is about, right? So vermum is nothing but a subtle uh, energy or prana or life, life, uh, en life force, or we call it as chi. It's like the different terminologies, but end of the day, it is a subtle energy in the body. The subtle energy flows inside the body in certain paths, in certain channels to deliver some function or, or, or uh, provide some uh, no, uh, uh, functioning of an organ or a, uh, some system in the body. That, that path, the channel, we call it as a saram. And this saram is what is connecting all the 72,000 nadis, okay? Similar, uh, the, this also, there is another concept in the body. It's something we call it as a reservoir, like energy, like the way you have a railway network, you have extra bogies or uh, emergency vehicles, but they all been used when there is a need. Similar in the body, we have a places called adangal. In Tamil, adangal means a, it's like adangi, meaning it is uh, in dormant state, but energy which is still dormant, it's like a reservoir or like a capacitor. And that can be used to correct the flow as well as energize and uh, you know, imbalanced uh, location. So it's like a reservoir to uh, treat as well as uh, give the extra energy when there is need comes. That's called adangal. Uh, as we said, this energy locations are not just physical one. It is connected with body, mind, and soul. So that's why the system is beyond a physical uh, limitations. And as we mentioned, there are uh, 12 uh, major location we called as a paduvarmam and 96 minor location we call Thoduvarmam. No, don't need to get into the details, but 
a major is a major which means a major location connects eight other subvermums so it means there is a channel specific to all the 12 padvermums that's where it totals out to 108 locations in the body uh, it's simple when this vermum is balanced the body and mind is healthy when this vermum location is imbalanced by any 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 injuries physical strain or any other activity i mentioned then the body becomes unhealthy okay so that's that's where we are the therapeutic uh, picture comes into picture uh, we said now varma marthuvam or kai marthuvam we call it as uh, why kai marthuvam because we don't use any instruments there it is only the hand or the, your own body is, uh, is is used as a tool to treat and that's why it's called it's also called as a kai marthuvam uh, varma locations or the points has two function it can heal as well as harm because it's simple right if i if i hit that place it can cause an if it can imbalance so obviously it can uh, harm you as a therapeutic thing i can go on correct it or balance it then it becomes a healing part of it and this is where we have two systems in parmam one is a medical system and another one is a martial arts side so that's where you you would have heard about varmakalai or uh, kalari pai to or silambam these are all like a martial arts side of varmam and as we mentioned varmam is not just only for the health purpose it is also to attain your spiritual and uh, fulfilling your desires we call it as uh, mukti or uh, you are attaining your bliss but obviously for that you need to have a healthy body and mind and the soul so this helps in kaya kalpa so varmam helps in retaining or rather taking you through this uh, journey of kaya kalpa or we call it as a longevity of life uh, how varmam therapy is little uh, different from others is as i mentioned it is a kai marthum there is no tools are required and also to uh, clarify it's not just a magic people may have a perception okay if i just touch or if i press things will become normal yes it may be because you may see in some scenarios it may relieve a pain immediate 20 30 percent you will immediately see by simulating certain vermum points you will feel the pain is almost uh, going is very good but it is not just that alone it has a very proper treatment approach uh, it is basically we call it as a cleanse first prevent next and then treat because it's simple right when uh, when a room is dirty and it's uh, full of garbage the first thing you need to do is first clean it and remove all those things and close the doors or close the window so that things doesn't fall into place then you can light a you know decorate it whatever you do right it's a simple common sense so here we have the similar kind of an approach we have to do the detoxing uh, follow certain you uh, know uh, prevention methods to avoid further accumulation of toxins then you do the treatment or therapies and there are a lot of pre and post conditions uh, required when we you know uh, treat uh, people it's not just simple um, yes there are a few things we can be do it can be done and give immediate benefits but as a as a pro procedural there is a pre and post condition and second it is a very holistic approach it is not just only the the therapy or the manipulation or energy imbalance it needs a dietary uh, uh, thing to be followed certain exercise things to be followed and the treatments are done at certain conditions uh, the condition of the patient condition of the therapist the time environment we call kala uh, and a lot of factors influence in treating it and obviously it is a non medicinal for most of the conditions certain condition there is a internal and external medicine is recommended for a uh, treatment so so that's where it is little different from maybe what you may thought about vermum from your uh, uh, information but this is this is the uh, vermum is all about okay uh, these are all like just for information only don't need to get into details uh, as we mentioned there is there are 108 points and they are located in different part of the body and they are also classified based on different uh, scenarios physical locations uh, there are certain varmams associated with chakras if you're familiar with the yoga uh, we have the the chakras and certain varmam points are associated with the chakras similar if you are a little <clears throat> if you're familiar with the uh, ayurveda we have uh, vada pitta and kapha basically the we call tridosha or the uh, the three energy uh, no, constitution uh, in the body so the varmam is also associated and mapped to this uh, varmam 
<coughs> sorry, the Vada Pitta Kaba locations as well. Okay. Uh, just thought of sharing a little history about Varmam. Uh, Varmam is like a, we call it as a God's gift. Basically, it is a gift from uh, Lord Shiva. It's a creator. So he invented or he created the system. And he shared this knowledge with uh, Parvati. And obviously, Nandi was there. So that's a, that's a legacy. So that's where the knowledge of uh, uh, Varmam got originated. And it is with them. Uh, during an occasion when Lord Muruga was uh, fighting against a demon, uh, Surabhadran, he could not win. Rather, he was uh, not able to kill him. So that's when he asked for a help and then Parvati uh, shared that knowledge of Varma. As it's more used from a martial art perspective, how to harm, right? So he gained that knowledge and in that uh, <clears throat> he, he defeated the demon. So that's where he gained that knowledge and, and he shared that with uh, Agastya Muni, or we call Siddhar Agastya, and to Siddhar Bogar. And from them, it was carried by 18 Siddhas. <coughs> for a period of almost like uh, 5,000 years in the different stages of uh, uh, the, the 5,000 years, they transformed, they, uh, they called it with different, different names because it's not that Siddhas are just uh, physical located people. They, they, they travel a lot, right? Meaning um, celestial travel and uh, soul travel, uh, many things. So this knowledge spread across uh, many regions. So that's why you will find a lot of similarity of this across uh, mostly in the Asian side of it. Uh, These 18 Siddhas transformed this knowledge into two uh, domains. One, primarily for the treatment or the therapies, which is the healing part of it. Similar, they also created the martial art part of it, which is primarily most of the Indian, uh, yeah, the kings and those, uh, the, those uh, references has a lot of uh, varmam uh, in the war, war methods, and primarily they are also, they use vermum during the treatments during the war. So they know how a person gets uh, no, uh, no injured and how to cure him, how to recover him fast. All those techniques were used in the, the war side of it. And as I mentioned, this was not just in the uh, India because earlier the Southern part is not just only the Tamil Nadu or Kerala today, it's called as Kumari Kandam. So this knowledge transferred across the South and that's when you see a lot of similarity, as I mentioned, in uh, either acupuncture, acupressure, or even the martial arts side, uh, no? kung fu, karate. Uh, they all have certain uh, similarities or rather references from uh, Varmam. Okay, okay. So I am just uh, just uh, pausing here uh, to see if there are any questions in the chat window, and see if we can answer that. Otherwise, I can move to the the main session of what is Varmam in day-to-day -day life. Vani ma'am, any questions there in the session? Okay. So let me move on. Once again, Sandeep. Yeah. Uh, okay, Aaron was asking some question. Okay. Do Adangal feel difference to Varmam such as different electromagnetic field? Okay. You have, uh, if you are, uh, <clears throat> once again, hold on, I'll come. Yeah. Sindhil, sir, can you? Yeah. Possibly, like, or can I? Or do... we'll keep we'll keep it at the end of the session. We'll have this yeah. question answered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is something which you need to little, Adangal system, when you go through a little deep, you'll understand one yeah, thing. Yeah. And also, uh, there is an energy flow. Uh, the question is about... Uh, can sick energy from deceased varmam affects you? I have felt this from the patient. Possible is there? We normally teach the prevention from that when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe Fine. we can answer during the end of the yes. session. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> so now let's get into our topic of uh, varmam in day-to-day -day life. I think that's a key topic. So I think fairly we try to understand varmam is a, a subtle energy which is flowing in our body. And any disturbance to that energy can create your illness or a disease or a symptom or a pain or anything. Same way, it is not just only to do all the disease part of it. It is also to do the wellness part of it, right? So that is where we wanted to focus more and how, how Varmam is playing a key role in our daily actions and activities, what we do. 
the very key aspect of vermam uh, is like you know your mother is the the vermam therapist when i say this uh, a mother knows how to hold a baby how to uh, hug a baby uh, when the baby is crying she knows what to do when it gets little injuries or hurt somewhere she knows uh, how to touch how to do a little massage you know indirectly she is uh, doing a vermam therapy okay and sometimes not just only to the baby whenever you as an adult or uh, elder like suppose you you feeling stressed or you feel uh, a headache or anything when you go and lie down uh, she will just do certain uh, you know uh, tadaval basically we call tadaval or like you know she is trying to do a little uh, massage around the head or uh, you know face and etc indirectly they are all also a vermam location so your mother is a one of the the best uh, you know uh, vermam therapist without her knowledge right likewise we also follow certain vermam in our daily actions that's what we are going to cover so what little do's and don'ts because i said a vermam location can heal and harm right so with your knowledge or without your knowledge you may be doing it all the way but with now with whatever the information we are sharing probably you'll do it with your own knowledge now so we just wanted to ensure there is simple do's and don'ts there uh vermam simulation is required only once in a day it is not that i do 10 times 5 times it cures fast it's not that way it is just a trigger it just triggers and the flow starts so it is just only required once in a day we have mentioned certain um, the tips and tricks uh, how to do uh, how many times you do it. just follow the instruction and also uh, it is good to it's good and it's mostly it works when you do it in the sunlight time which means after the sunrise and before sunset is the right time to do any therapeutic uh, ben- good therapeutic benefits as well as when you try to simulate on yourself also it is good to do in those kind of a time and always do it in empty stomach that's a that's a best practice and don't try on a pregnant woman or a child's below 5 because children will have their own growth uh, path so vermam should not disturb their you uh, know flow so don't try on the children as well as for elders about 60 years because we need to understand their the conditions today it's not everybody okay, we can measure everybody on a same scale like uh, uh, the metrics because each one has a different lifestyle food habits and uh, medical conditions so elders we should uh, consider differently and uh, uh, if you need to use an oil preferable oil is uh, sesame or the gingelly or the thill oil uh, because you need a little lubrication i think it will answer uh, one of the question somebody asked uh the negative energy and etc because the lubric the the oil acts as a lubrication as well as a protector okay when you're treating it for others oil is important because it will act as a protector okay and similar don't have any nails because when you do something around the eyes or etc it can harm and uh, the touch part of it because people have a perception vermam is like a pressure treatment so you need to give more pressure etc it's a motherly touch as i said it is a mother's treatment right so a motherly touch or a feather touch is enough so we don't need to put a lot of pressure then only it gives more benefit there is no such concept there okay okay so let's get into our first action uh, which is very common uh, we see or we do uh, very commonly whenever uh, we have a very heavy meal or a, a, a feast or a, you know heavy heavy food and if you feel like uh, you feel a little uncomfortable or you feel like uh, uh, no it's over overloaded right then automatically you notice your 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 hand will go around your navel and you'll be doing some kind of a rotation which is a automatic uh, you know habit many time we do it right people start doing it indirectly you know what is it uh, doing is so basically it is uh, activating certain uh, vermam points <coughs> uh, we call it as uh, undi varmam undi varmam undi means navel okay so there is a varmam in navel uh, which is activated uh, navel is actually a, a midpoint in the body which divides the body into two equal halves and also helps in balancing the upward energy as well as downward energy okay so if you if you're a little familiar on Ayur, ayurveda we call we call we, we use the word call abana vayu Uh, udana vayu and all basically the energy required to move things upward energy required to move things downward For example your uh, uh, urine or um, a bowl and the menstrual cycle and etc is all downward you need a downward energy to flow it outward right so it regulates those 
uh, the, the energy flow between uh, thing. Second navel is the, we call it as a second brain in your body. Uh, if you know, uh, during the pregnancy period, the mother and child is connected only through the umbilical cord on the navel, right? So the food goes there, or waste goes there, communication, thoughts, mind, everything from mother is transferred to the baby through the umbilical cord. So that's why it's so important. And, uh, and that's where all the 72,000 nadis also come and uh, meet or junction. So the navel is a very key point and obviously along with the other worms I'm talking about, it helps in the it digestion or it regulates all your gastrointestinal activities. Okay, so Undi Varmam is a very, very important point. Next comes, there is something called Urmi Varmam. Okay, Urmi is just above the navel. And this Varmam uh, helps in regulating your bile juice and as well as insulin secretion. Okay, because it's just close to that region. And also uh, in Tamil, Urmi is also called as uh, roaring. It means uh, somebody have a snoring problems or uh, the, the voice, you know, um, uh, like a snoring voice, this helps in regulating it. So that is another functioning of Urmi Varmam. And Mutra Kalam, Mutram in Tamil is called as urine. This Varmam is located below the navel. Okay. So it helps in regulating or rather proper excretion process happening when the food is you know, intaken. So it helps in regulating the, the excretion as well as strengthening your bladder. So that's the functioning of uh, Mutra Kalam. Pallavarmam is, uh, is residing uh, below the ribs. And in fact, this is regulating the liver and the spleen. <clears throat> so if you now think logically, when you do a rotation around your navel, you're indirectly touching or activating all these Varmam points, which internally <coughs> helps you in the digestion process. So this is what you may be doing uh, without your knowledge. So now how do we do it little more uh, effective and make it more preventive? I think our objective is all about preventive and effective thing, right? It's very simple thing. You can create a, a daily routine habit, which means every day when you wake up in the morning, empty stomach, okay? Uh, little oil, maybe you can take either a sesame oil or a coconut oil, just put drops, few drops in the navel and wet your or other oil your uh, hand just keep your four fingers close to each other okay and do a clockwise rotation around your navel around eight times you can do a clockwise rotation around your navel even if you want even if you consciously think all you will not you will not try to do an anti-clockwise because the mind will not automatically trigger you to do a clockwise rotation only and it is preferred to do only a clockwise rotation eight times with this. After finishing the eight times, just spread your fingers. Spread your fingers and do the same eight times clockwise rotation around your navel. Now you know why I'm saying this, because it will touch all the, the varmam locations in the body. And what I mentioned is only four. There are many points in the body and indirectly they will activate. Activate and we're going to talk some of them in the further uh, you know, uh, session because that's the area where you have all the reproductive system, especially for the ladies. So it's a very good practice and it can be one of your daily uh, daily routine habit. And this will definitely help you to get rid of digestion problems. When the digestion is good and proper, half of your disease gets cured. Weight, weight gain, all majorly a problem is uh, you know, obesity and everything is because of improper digestion. Okay, so when you start this as a habit, slowly you'll see uh, progress in a lot of other uh, long-term uh, illness you may have and they will start slowly recovering back. Constipation is a major thing. It gets addressed when you follow this. Urinary issues, because this helps in regulating your excretion process and etc. So this is a very good practice. You can start doing it as a learning from today, okay? Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about is applying a pain bomb, which is a very common uh, 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 thing we do whenever we get a headache. Uh, we just apply a, uh, any of the pain bombs around this region. Just we call the temple region, just above after the eyebrow, we try to do it, right? What we are trying to do is uh, nothing but we are activating a vermum called or adangal. Here, we, adangal I said is energy location. 
is called pancha narambu adangal pancha narambu means five nerves adangal exact translation what are those five this is the location where all your five sense organs interconnect your sense of seeing sense of smelling uh, hearing tasting and then the feeling all those comes and terminate here and if you really understand what is headache headache is nothing but a distress to one of your sense organ if one of your sense organ is not happy or as it get disturbed it creates a headache example some people when they get into your room which is newly painted they get headache which the smell is not good for them so sense organ affected it gives a headache so sometime you wear a new chapel and it starts uh, you know giving a biting we call chapel biting right you, you feel little bit of uh, you know uh, disturbance and that causes a headache or you see something very ugly your sight your vision is not happy you get a headache right or you taste something something the food is not tasting as you need then headache starts so it is a distress to one of your sense organ the headaches happens so so the simple thing what we do is amardhanjan so i'm saying you don't need a pain bomb or anything indirectly what you are doing is just <coughs> activating this uh, adangal adangal i said it is a energy reservoirs so you are kind of activating this energy reservoir so it helps in giving the energy as well as uh, unblocking if anything is blocked the technique is very simple so you just do a, this temple region so you know this is the temple region just three times clockwise and three times anti clockwise this is enough and little later you will notice your headache is reducing because it is basically unblocking all the disturbance caused in that location okay so this is a very good simple uh, we we know it but now you know why we are doing it and you know how to do it little more uh, with an awareness okay uh, one word of one uh, tips okay um, as i mentioned varmam is a point it's a location it's not just pressing when you press you need to have a consciousness you need to get your attention there you need to uh, mindful of what you are doing so it basically you are you are bringing your thoughts to that place i'm saying there is a place if i do this my headache will go off so it means you are thinking and then doing it that's what we called as a consciousness so any varmam uh, whether you are doing a treatment or you are doing itself make it conscious okay i am touching this this is for certain things so it means you are your mind should be there here when your attention is there the energy will start flowing there that's a that's a science behind it right so just focus uh, with your energy there to so the varmam location then it will work beautifully okay uh, next we are going to talk about uh, uh, simulation around forehead okay uh, this happens uh, culturally uh, so if you notice uh, in various cultures you know, we always do something around the forehead if you notice me i put some my uh, thirnir this place Uh, if you notice uh, christians when they do prayer in the church they will hold uh, their hand like this uh, muslims when they finish their namaz they will touch the floor uh, with the forehead so what is this uh, signifies basically uh, they are activating a varmam called tilartha kalam <clears throat> so tilartha kalam is like a, one of a key uh, varmam location it is just in the midpoint between the two eyebrows it is there in the, uh, the mid point and this is a consciousness point and scientifically if you look at just behind this point is where your pituitary gland is there so indirectly as our religious practice we are trying to activate our pituitary gland every day so that your hormones are balanced for a day to day function that's the science behind touching and activating or doing something to activate a energy in that region so there's a very good practice uh, so we've been doing it but there is always uh, we missing that out okay so and moreover this place is also like a hypnotizing point okay because it's a consciousness so somebody can come and influence your con con consciousness so that is where there is a protection system in our culture by wearing a 
colored uh, bindis and black red and etc that is one 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 kind of an approach uh, similarly it is also a psychosomatic point so any disturbance on uh, mentally like uh, a stress or a depression or anxiety uh, that can be relieved by activating this uh, place okay so very wonderful point for uh, consciousness uh, regulating your hormones because uh, there is a pituitary gland so uh, everyday activation helps in regulating your hormones very consciously you can do things and also uh, you can distress I meaning you can de-stress yourself uh, if you activate it how to do it it is very simple okay so uh, if you can glide from your nose maybe the the preferable finger is ring finger because ring finger will not give a lot of pressure because it is a very sensitive place so we don't want to give very high pressure so preferable to use your ring finger so just if you glide on the nose you will hit a place and that's that's a place or that's what is called the tilartha kalam so what you can do is just do a clockwise three times rotation lift it clockwise three times rotation lift it clockwise three times rotation lift it simple okay when you do this be conscious just focus your attention towards the eyebrow and be calm and say i am i'm doing basically think think peacefully like it's basically as i said it's an energy treatment energy level right subtle energy level not even energy it is very subtle energy level so you need to be mindful of what you're doing and bring your attention there and do it it works wonder it's a very very good daily practice which will make you uh, the best thing is mentally stable okay so you can practice this so helps relieving all your mental stress uh, sleeping problems and all hormonal disorders any type of hormonal disorders it's uh, what i'm saying again it's not a magic that i'm doing it tomorrow the day after it will get sorted out no it's a best practice it is a daily practice when you do it automatically it will start regulating <clears throat> okay uh, the other one we are going to talk about is uh, wrestlers tapping if you notice our indian wrestling or any any form of wrestling you'll see them they tap their uh, thigh uh, before going for a kick or they before going for a uh, knock they will do the tapping okay what are they doing is basically they are activating a varmam called thodai varmam <clears throat> and similarly will they will do uh, the biceps it's called thivalai varmam these two are like a energy it's like a batteries because they want energy they tap it it releases the energy because in the fighting they need a heavy energy to give a punch or a heavy energy to hit and it's like a spark when they do that and tap it releases the energy and similarly these are all uh, these are all uh, what you call it as uh, confident points when they show the tap it boosts their confidence generally you also see in the street fights right somebody challenging <coughs> they always tap it on this and they say i am there i am ready so it gives a lot of confidence psychologically okay uh, therapeutically it is basically a um, what do you call a pain relieving point anything below your leg there is a pain this is a very very good location to uh, simulate i'm just showing the exact location of this varmam specifically the thodai varmam okay uh, especially it is very helpful when for people who's doing yoga and meditation uh, i do have the same challenge i cannot sit more than 15 minutes i get numbness and the entire attention concentration will go for a toss you keep on trying to you know uh, change the legs position of the leg and then automatically lose the concentration so if you need to have uh, uh, meaning get rid of numbness this is a very good uh, point so you can just activate this before uh, sitting for yoga gives wonderful result second it also stabilizes the um, uh, what do you call the vertigo problems because uh, imbalancing shivering in the lower limbs it helps in uh, you know uh, rectifying it so it's a very wonderful uh, point for pain relief as well as uh, vertigo as well as uh, numbness etc can be uh, addressed okay 
uh, also the pain because any pain in the leg which we call it as a vata it can be cured okay how to do it is very simple sit uh, by lean uh, sit in a comfortable place either on a chair or even on the floor using your edge of the, the palm on this two, two two with the two hands on the thigh just give up five times clockwise five times anti clockwise rotation so this will activate the todai varma i am not talking thevelai the thevelai is different thing so let's not get into but todai varma is very very beautiful varma for relieving all the leg pains leg related pains and shivering problems and especially the numbness so this you can practice very easily uh, next we are going for uh, memory uh, memory recollection actions okay uh this pictures may be little familiar and may be happening for most of you so whenever uh, we forget something right we start scratching our head if you don't know something then i will start what is important to see where are you scratching actually if you see in the picture they are scratching three different location one just above the ear uh, one on the tip of the head and one behind the head again these are all actions we do without our knowledge but indirectly uh, basically they are activating certain varmam points called uh, poigai varmam poigai varmam is the one which is just above the uh, ears this is like an energy reservoir it is also like an energy flow and it helps in activating this helps in activating your brain so which means uh, when you scratch here you know the answer for sure maybe you need a little trigger you need a little uh, uh, what do you call little time to recollect and uh, you know, answer it so that's when you will start scratching it here uh, there is a place we call it as a kondaikolli when you are scratching here you are confused you you don't know whether it is uh, yes or no or you are just seeing whether i met this person or no or you are not remembering the name of the person something you are in a confusion whether is a or b so it is you know the answer but you are not uh, you are confused okay third is basically uh, behind the, the head it is called serum kolli this point is uh, called as a uh, truth point which means you don't know the answer okay or you know the answer either one is the possible thing and this is actually egoistic place this you can example when somebody hits you there you get anger it's a very very egoistic and uh, uh, the truth point you will be you it will it will show your actual face okay so when you scratching there you do not know the answer if somebody is scratching here and trying to do something you can for sure know that he doesn't know the answer if he is scratching here you can you, you can for sure that he will come with an answer but he will take time or he may be confused if he is doing something you wait for him he will give you the answer properly okay so that's the kind of a science behind why people are you know uh, scratching end of the day they trying to recollect some memory now how do you make it more effective because i am not here to uh, recollect and do it's about uh, prevention right we are trying to see how can you better it when you activate all these things regularly your brain function becomes very uh, effective so how to do that again again a simple technique okay i just left one more vermum Uh, we call it as a punal varma okay uh, it's basically it is on the left shoulder here okay uh, if you notice uh, in our uh, culture like uh, pandits and brohits they do a lot of uh, when they do the uh, uh, chanting and etc they almost they chant for uh, chant mantras for more than 1 hour 2 hours and all when they recollect all those mantras how they do it and if you notice the way they do it keep some time they very often they will be just pulling their uh, thread the punal what they what they wearing they'll be just pulling it basically that is triggering a point here that's the point which is connecting your ears eyes and your mind so they immediately recollect those mantras and they and they keep uh, you know uh, chanting it or recitating it okay so that's the power of all this uh, na, location so now how do we uh, do it regularly activate them regularly is a very simple technique just oiling your head <clears throat> every day apply uh, any hair oil 
preferred on your climatic conditions, your uh, you know, preferred thing, and do a, a massage around your head region. You can own because we we teach uh, the the proper method, but for a while you can always do a uh, your own style of oil massage. Indirectly, what you are doing is you are kind of touching in the head region alone. We have almost like twenty five uh, vermum loci, vermum points. Okay, so when you do the oil aim, you are almost touching every of this point invariably. Okay, so which is good enough. So you, you can be a layman; you don't need to know vermum, but by activating these all points. your day will become very fresh you know because when you take oil bath or uh, apply oil and take bath you can clearly see the difference energies will be very high you will be very attentive and uh, you will be active and things are good right so <coughs> so you can start this a uh, practice uh, to 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 what do you call improve your uh, memory system okay uh, next one we are talking is like uh, things we wear around the west okay uh, traditionally you see uh, men women there is always something is worn around your uh, uh, west region uh, ladies will have uh, jewels and uh, villages if you notice most of them will have one towel uh, they will either wear it in the west region or they will wear it in the head uh, both has a purpose a modern world we wear a belt okay basically what we are doing is uh, there is a vermum called kachai kala basically it is a vermum uh, lying on the navel region it is the longest vermum in the body okay i already talked about what is uh, the navel right navel is the one which is splitting the energies between uh, the body upward and downward energy it's a key center location all those beneficial stuff very importantly it is also a, a location for uh, uh, basically today's in the modern world uh, we see a lot of uh, issues around uh, Uh, ladies especially the ladies problems like uh, pcod menstrual issues pms issues and especially men and women the infertility issues and uh, uh, you know um, all those things and if you really notice uh, uh, why that is happening is because uh, the way in which we are wearing our uh, the dress today and if you notice uh, the wearing is meaning our dress uh, uh, wearing is moved from navel to lower waist region and if we really see the lower waist region is where the reproductive organs are there so when you give unnecessary pressure unnecessary tension or by the way of a dress the way you sit and do all those activity there is a lot of disturbance happens to your the physical uh, you know aspect of that you know reproductive things okay so that is where this kachai kalam or other this uh, this place or this vermum is a very very Uh, important one traditionally if you notice uh, men or women used to wear a black color thread around the navel which is the very purpose was to regulate because it is on the navel so even if you eat more there is a, there is an indicator to stop it whenever you sit the pressure is only given at the navel region nothing will be given at the lower waist region okay so this was missing like you know we started because of uh, the lifestyle and other thing we started uh you know missing this uh, the practice which is a traditional one which is really bothering us today on a lot of uh, you know issues so how we can uh, correct this is uh, very simple uh we have to start wearing our belt or a dress inner and external wears around the navel that's the only simple uh tip or the the technique we need to do nothing else because even for many uh menstrual issues ladies issues and etc the simple solution what we give them is uh, wear a thread in the navel <clears throat> around the navel for 3 months 6 months for a treatment purpose if you want a long term benefit start a habit of wearing things on the navel okay not below the navel so this will indirectly help in regulating a lot of stuff which i talked previously as well okay so this is a very simple thing you can always uh, follow okay uh the other thing i want to talk is also another habit we kind of rub our nose uh when there is a cold cough or running nose uh indirectly what we are doing is basically we are activating a vermum called murti vermum it is just in the tip of the uh, nose it is actually just in the tip of the nose this vermum is very essential uh for regulating the heat uh in the in the in the body in this region and uh, another important aspect is like you know when you when you do this action 
it stops the 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 running nose okay so that you feel relieved and parallel if you also notice when you have a, a cold cough you have a breathing problem you always notice there is a, a little bit of struggle you have to breathe this vermum helps in regulating the breath as well okay so it does many purpose so in in vermum uh, vermum point has multiple uh, functions one it will address a very basic uh, no symptom same vermum can be used to treat a very major disease also okay so it is all in the uh, the way we treat or where we, we call it as an applied system along with this vermum you also need to activate few other more vermum then it solves a bigger problems okay but what we are talking here is mostly a very simple day to day life uh, symptoms and how to treat it so the murti vermum is very good for this this thing the other critical one it also helps in uh, recovering the uh, facial uh, you know fallacy like you know people having a, a alignment problems and etc this vermum plays a very key role mostly from a therapeutical angle okay so this is very simple how do you activate it nothing whatever you are doing the same thing but little conscious what i said right when you are activating vermum be more conscious and focus your attention to that particular place and think and then do a small action of up upward and downward actions near the nose this will help in <clears throat> avoiding your running nose okay uh, the another one uh, we want to talk is the posture our standing postures this is a very common uh, no, picture right whenever you are tired when you did a long walk or you've been uh, doing a heavy exercise at the end of it you'll you'll stand in this portion and uh, what is the significance of this basically you are activating a vermum called nangana putu vermum okay nangana putu is uh, just uh, above the buttocks you will have uh, two dips uh, just above the buttock that's the location and that's what is called as nangana putu okay this is something something like your ball socket joint right in the uh, the hip region and it is a, a practice we always uh, do right uh, when uh, <clears throat> this is actually a point where it relieves the pain below your uh, the the limb region second it is also a confident point and many a time when you stand with your uh, hands you uh, know uh, locked uh, with your hip in the back side right it gives a lot of uh, confidence and in addition it also helps in uh, just a minute uh, so obviously it is it's mostly on the lower limbs stabilities okay uh, pain relieving uh, and and mostly we do it for the back pain treatment this is a very uh, you know uh, key key vermum location that we treat for most of the back pain locations okay so how do we uh, use this more properly okay is simple okay what you can do is uh, with your thumb with the thumb fingers hold that point i said dips the two dips you will notice just above the buttocks just hold it do a three times outward rotation okay with inhaling the breath okay and exhale just with a little lift okay so three times you are doing an outward movement inhaling and when you lift it just exhale through your mouth okay this will give a relief to your back pains any type of a back pain immediately you'll find a relief because you are kind of energizing as well as uh, giving more energy as well as you are removing the pain from that particular location so this is a very wonderful uh, uh, technique you can do for after a long walk or your work or sitting long time in your chair or any any of any such physical thing after that you can do this or you can use it as part of your uh, daily exercise routine after uh, after you doing a normal exercise routine keep this as one of your simple exercise routine okay so this will help in relieving your back pains okay um <clears throat> now i'm just given the examples so, so basically what we have covered is uh, what is vermum and uh, how it is use, useful in our day to day life and we have talked about few of the example this is only a few there are many things we do as a connect with vermum 
with your knowledge or without your knowledge right so we'll be sharing more such uh, knowledge in coming sessions we have taken some few of them uh, there is one we are going to cover for especially for women uh, probably the next week we'll be having a session what are the worms which is uh, helping women uh, both from a prevention perspective physical and you know, mental prevention or protection so that will be one kind of a thing so there are various uh, you know uh, use we have with the worm in our daily life okay now what we understood like uh, just trying to summarize you uh, worm can remove or cure pains and disease through the therapeutic purpose okay it can be used to maintain your wellness of body mind and soul it's, i said no, it is not just only therapy it also helps in maintaining the wellness it can be a self defense okay uh, from the martial arts side yes it is there but mentally also uh, this is an answer for one of the therapeutic question like how do you protect yourself because most of the times uh, the therapists also get through a lot of uh, trouble when they treat people okay so there is a prevention or the protection required for the therapists as well and it work, works vermum works very well to rejuvenate and help in preventive you know uh, wellness okay and it can complement with any type of therapies whether it is allopathy ayurveda siddha any any kind of a therapies you can always you know uh, follow certain vermum practice which will complement the entire therapy and other key aspect we talk vermum is not just only to heal not only to give disease free life it is also to enjoy your full mental and physical and uh, spiritual happiness okay so uh, the only word of caution is uh, because if you mishandle it it may give a unfavorable results so that's the only thing you need to be you know aware of okay now how do you learn and practice vermum okay we heard we learned something as how vermum now how can you put them into use okay how do you put them into use to treat as well as uh, prevent okay let me cover the treatment part of it first because uh, that's where many people would immediately get benefited out uh, vermum is a very good solution for pain management okay any kind of a pain management uh, be it uh, uh, frozen shoulder uh, uh, neck rigidity or uh, back pain lower back pain sciatica especially for ladies knee pains or uh, any 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 of those kind of a things vermum gives a very good immediate relief i said na pain it will immediately relieve you okay and immediately after the uh, one or two sessions they will feel 50 60% of the pain subsiding and then after that there is a protocol you have to follow then it will recover in addition to the pain management it works wonderfully on psychosomatic or psychological problems whether it is uh, Uh, anxiety depression stress uh, sleep disorders any of those things it works you know uh, complementing with uh, the other therapies and other key areas is primarily the the ladies specific problems uh, whether it is uh, menstrual issues or uh, pcos or pcods or infertilities all those uh, things it works and uh, arthritis problems ortho all primarily or spondylitis compressions disc bulge and all those issues it it also gives a very good result and uh, especially able kids autisms and adhd kind of problems vermum is a very good solution in fact we teach the parents how to treat because they need a long term treatments and uh, and the parents needs to know how to treat the the children so that's the other side of the other kind of an you know, treatments we can get benefited from uh, vermum treatment as i mentioned the vermum treatment approach is always uh, cleanse prevent and treat so the detoxification is the detoxification is the first uh, procedure then there is a pathyam we called as the food restrictions to prevent certain tastes we have to kind of reduce avoid so that we balance and then the treatment becomes more effective generally the vermum therapies are three to five sessions should be good enough for a normal uh pains and uh, common problems for certain uh, chronic and uh, acute issues uh, there may be a protocol wherein there will be 3 days 5 days 7 days and sometime in house treatments may be required and medicines also would be recommended based on uh, doctor's advice which can be in in uh, what do you call um, uh, inward medicine as well as outward there are certain oils and other things also will be recommended and in addition to that there is a Uh, there is a life cycle a lifestyle changes would be needed food 
dietary changes and exercise recommendations to be given then only this uh, the treatment is complete and you can get the long term uh, benefit okay so that's the the part of uh, the therapy and obviously with the therapy benefits <clears throat> the illness will reduce pains can reduce stress can reduce and obviously uh, the other uh, benefit of uh, vermum as we said your immunity is uh, your strength your sleep gets better and uh, you get into the journey of kayakalpa the longevity okay this is one part of the treatment side of it now there can be people who says what is in for me as an individual i want to be want to go through a preventive life and um, maintain myself uh, healthy physically mentally and etc there are trainings and uh, you know uh, workshops we do primarily to enable you from a preventive perspective so which will include uh, we call it as a panchashtra sutti basically five sense therapy see end of the day uh, the the five sense communicates with the mind and then your thoughts creates and the thoughts creates your action and behavior and then that in turn if it is positive good results if it is negative it creates a disease so the first thing you need to do always is five sense you have to control your sense cleanse your sense and you know maintain them well so there is a workshop and training on how to maintain your five sense it will flow through some detoxification process diets oil baths and etc second we also learn little more detail about what is vermum adangals and what are the vermums and adangals associated with certain um, ailments or disease or illness that knowledge you will gain also you will know how to treat yourself self therapy as well as treat others for the basic stuff because you are not a therapist but you can still treat few few of the common problems in your friends and family members okay so this program is available currently in a two days uh, gurukula style program uh, there is also one program we are designing more from an online uh, for the people who cannot travel so there will be one one of the program which will come as an online version with some video uh, assisted uh, you know um, uh, practicals wherein you will practice and then you will get the benefit of self healing okay so end of it you will you will know the, you learn some basics of vermum you will know certain applied systems of self therapies and end of it it helps in regeneration of uh, uh, the body mind and etc and uh, it's a good good thing for an individual who wants to maintain the uh, self health okay you don't need to depend on a medicine it's an alternative and traditional method to maintain your good health okay then we have programs for the therapist and medical professionals doctors vaidyas or healers who wants to treat others okay but again the common problem most of us is interested is only healing part of it but self healing is important before i treat somebody i should be healthy physically mentally fit and strong and protected from all the negative stuff right then i can treat others so again this program also goes through the uh, the the self uh, healing on self prevention techniques for therapists then the detailed session on all the knowledge about vermums a different uh, touch and feel treatment is a touch therapy so we need to we, we call it as a kai bhagam and sai bhagam which means your hand should know where to touch how to touch and what energy to feel and how much pressure to give so that will that's an experience that's a perfection so when for a therapist they need to know that kind of a knowledge and this sessions cover and uh, this is actually a 3 day program uh, which is available now as well as if somebody is interested to continue as a certification there is a 6 month certification or if interested as a diploma there is a program to convert or rather uh, <clears throat> do a diploma on uh, therapist program so this is a more of a practical a little bit of theory so that uh, time and uh, information is available for people to uh, learn more you know from the asan and the other uh, teachers okay uh the benefit is obviously you, you will you will become a healer but more uh, protecting yourself and then heal others so it means you will learn more to protect yourself first and then uh, heal others and obviously it will complement your treatment because many a time the healers are exploring what other complementing therapies that can uh, speed up the 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 recovery process or uh, give you no know, give a treatment which is side effect free or it is a long term benefit obviously this will you know uh, benefit for them uh, the other thing just a sharing a few information on the courses available uh, maybe if somebody is interested after this what is next if i wanted to uh, learn more what is that 
available for you. These are the list of courses. Uh, maybe probably at the end of the session, we'll be sharing what are the courses, but key important thing is uh, there are courses available for even normal people or somebody who's very new to Vermam and wanted to know Vermam and start practicing in their day-to-day -day life. There is a course. Uh, somebody is a therapist. They, they also have the option. Somebody is a doctor and medical professional. They wanted to complement their therapy with the Vermam. It's available. All somebody is already into Siddha and Ayurveda. They need to because there is an equivalent system in Vermam also. Uh, Ayurveda called as Marma. So there is an integrated uh, uh, session or the course to understand what are the difference, what are the complementing things, how to use it more effectively. So there are different uh, courses available. So you can always uh, make use of it. Uh, one such program is coming up it is a Gurukula style program, a morning to night tightly packed program, learning, uh, practicing, all knowledge sharing, as well as uh, self therapy practice, uh, treatment practice, exploring the place with uh, your own meditation, walking, and many, many other you know, uh, good stuff. So you can always explore that. Uh, the diploma I talked about, this is uh, uh, currently uh, at TDU, uh, the Transdisciplinary uh, Health Science and Technologies uh, uh, registered for the, the diploma program. So you'll get the, the university certification for the diploma.